Welcome to Mount Prospect Public Library's Library Life. I'm Kathy Cushing. Today we'll peek in on Make It Monday and learn how teens create desert plants from yarn. We'll also enjoy Ralph's World Live, an interactive Super Saturday rock concert. And we'll discuss the financial forecast for 2020. But first, let's discover how this year's winter reading program invites you to chill out at your library. While Jack Frost is keeping us bundled up outside, the 2020 Mount Prospect Public Library Winter Reading Program beckons patrons of all ages to come on in and chill out at your library throughout the month of February. We all sat down and we decided that we should lean into relaxation for the new year and leaning into reading whatever you want, whatever helps you relax. For adult services, for the winter reading program, we like to keep it open and accessible to everyone. So you just come in any time during February and fill out a slip for every book read, and then you'll be entered to win a prize. Participant prizes are geared toward warm relaxation and cool entertainment. We'll have many gift cards to local businesses nearby, so you can chill out there if you like. <laughs> and then come chill out here. And we also leaned into a reading nook bundle and some other similar relaxation type items. Some of the benefits of coming and participating in the adult winter reading program are to talk to us and get to learn our collection as well as talk to others in the community that may be participating. Over at the library's teen space, young adults in 6th through 12th grades are reading whatever they like as they either chill or energize with a mini reading challenge. For the mini challenge we have five different categories where they can read a book that you just liked the cover of, read a book by an author that you've not known, read a book you know that relates to your favorite fandom, things like that. And We just for the winter reading program really want to encourage teens to read whatever they feel like reading, and just give them a little bit of encouragement through some tiny prizes and drawing slips to win other things, to encourage reading you know, all throughout the year. Completing a mini challenge could snowball into the chance of winning one of several grand prizes. One of the grand prizes is a gift card to the movie theater, and we have a little sort of movie marquee sign. We also have a Bluetooth speaker, a mug, hot chocolate, and a blanket. We have a drawing set with a huge pack of Sharpies, and um, we have a bunch of board games, different kinds that were recommended to us by the teens as their favorites. Both young adults and adults are asked to share what they read and fill out entry slips here at the library's Fiction AV Teen Desk. When they come up to the desk and they're telling us about a book that they've read, they're getting to connect with someone else who really enjoys reading, so I think that's a lot of encouragement to keep reading. And then, because we don't have any requirements about how long the book is or what kind of a book, it's really just encouraging them to read whatever they want. It sort of promotes a reading community. You're part of this community of people who loves books. Down in the Youth Services Department, children are also encouraged to share what they read. For winter reading this year, um, kids ages 11 and younger can come to the youth desk and pick up an activity card. And that card will give them choices of activities that will change each week. And there are things you can do at the library, like reading different kinds of books from our displays, um, coming to some of our special events, like we've got pajama story time, Harry Potter book night, and of course Fan Fest. Do those activities and tell us about what you're reading and get a small prize. When kids turn in an activity card, they will get their choice of a prize, which can be a coupon from a local business, or they can get a small toy like a plush or a bookmark. And then that also works as their ticket into some drawings. So each week we'll have five winners that get a gift card and their choice of a book. And then at the end of the program, we're going to have four grand prize winners. Grand prizes here include a Kindle Fire HD, four passes to the Shed Aquarium, a family fun basket, and a baby toddler basket. It's very cold outside, so we just want to remind you that the library is a great place to come and 
do some fun things. It, you can chill out and read a good book, or you can play games. There's lots of fun things to do. And we want to encourage reading for fun and just exploring the different kinds of books uh, based on things that interest every reader. Chill Out at Your Library runs throughout the month of February. For more information, contact the library at area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. While no one has a crystal ball when it comes to investing, diligent research and the advice of a trusted financial planner may prove invaluable in this arena. Joining me today on Library Life to discuss his library event, Financial Forecast 2020, is John Daly, the CEO and founder of Daly Investment Management here in Mount Prospect. Welcome. Oh, thanks, Kathy. John, let's start out by talking a little bit about your background as a financial planner and wealth manager. Yeah, so I've been an advisor for 21 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, spent 10 years on the retail side of the business, working for a couple of the country's largest brokerage firms. And 11 years ago, I set up my firm, Daily Investment Management, as a registered investment advisor to help individuals, uh, families, small businesses with financial planning and wealth management. Now, you come to the library almost every year yeah. to give us a financial forecast. Yes. What is some of the information that you try to include in your presentation? So we talk about what's happened recently in the past year, kind of what the major events were with the economy, how the markets have fared for investors. We talk about the current environment and then what we might expect for the future. So it gives investors a kind of a good recap of where we were, where we are currently, and where we might be headed with the current environment. So let's talk a little bit about last year, mm -hmm. 2019. Yeah. How did that jive with your forecast from last year? So last, the 2019 was great for investors. Mm -hmm. It was a great year across the board. So if you were in bonds or stocks, international investing, everyone did well. Uh, even commodities did well. So last year at this time, there were a lot of different forecasts out there about 12, 13 months ago calling for maybe a, a slowdown or a downturn within the investment markets. Right. Um, we were predicting slowdown in GDP. Uh, potentially on the horizon, which ended up being a surprise. We, we had great GDP numbers last year. Um, so that was a complete opposite forecast of what many people predicted. Mm -hmm. um, in our forecast, we don't predict short term. It's very hard to predict any short term movements with the economy uh, because there's so many different variables involved. Right. Um, majority of the economy is driven by consumer spending, which about 70% comes from you and I and everyone else spending. So it's really hard to predict that mm -hmm. millions of people, what they spend on an ongoing basis. Right. Um, so investors were pleasantly surprised. So that's kind of the focus is what we remind people to say. Keep a long-term view. Try to you know focus on the things you can control and kind of try to zone out a little bit of the things you can't control, like the daily movements of the stock market, interest rates, et cetera. So tell me, what would you say is your financial forecast for 2020? So last year was a great year. 2019 was fantastic. The right. S&P uh, market was up about 32%. Mm -hmm. um, international stocks were up 22%. I don't expect a repeat of those numbers. Traditionally, when we have such big return numbers, we don't see the same repeat next year. Right. But that doesn't mean it can't happen. But most people are predicting a little bit slower um, return environment, but they think the economy looks pretty strong in the U.S. So they think GDP will still be, will, we're still going to grow. 2%, for, you know, most likely. That's a, a tone down from where we were in 2017 and 2018 right. of 3%, mm -hmm. okay? But it's still growth. So the focus is we're still growing. We're growing at a slower clip, but we're still moving forward. So we should have positive stock market returns, but I also think it'll be a little bit bumpier ride. So we might have some more volatility. Um, the China trade deal is always still in the news. Right. Um, issues with Iran now are coming up in the news. Those things will cause uncertainty and a little bit of volatility for the stock market. But most people are predicting a, a positive return for 2020. How about unemployment? Does that does that factor in? Absolutely. So unemployment is at great levels. We're at 3.5 percent unemployment rate. It's been going down. You know, think about it. Ten years ago in 2009, we were at 10 percent. Right. And we're down to 3.5 percent. Most economists think we're going to go into the low threes for unemployment. So people are working. We're also seeing wage growth. Okay. So wages have been increasing the past few years. So we're at 3.7 percent wage growth. Mm -hmm. So if if you're working and you're getting increases in in salary raises you're gonna spend. And again, as I mentioned, you know, 70% of GDP is consumer spending, so that helps the economy. So if people are employed, they're getting raises, it's gonna help the overall economy. So you're a financial planner. When, when would you say is the best time to start with your investment strategies? Yesterday. So, <laughs> but as soon as possible. Right. So all joking aside, 
Um, so I was in this. I've been in this business since I was 22 years old. So I really, you know, for me, it's it's it started early on. I had some mentors that kind of taught me the ropes. Um, but really, everyone has goals. So whether you're young and you're working for retirement and you're in the wealth accumulation stage, or you're older and retirement's a couple years away. Um, and you need to start worry about protecting and preserving your assets, mm -hmm. or you might be in retirement right now and figure out the best way to you know generate an income to re you know replace those paychecks you were receiving, uh, and that might last ten or twenty years. So I think you really it's a really important. A lot of people, a lot of people, the the old uh, joke in the industry is that more people spend time planning their annual vacations than they do looking at their finances. Right. Okay. So about eighty six percent of people out there do no financial planning which is really crucial. Right. So I think you know everyone needs to really take the time to look at their finances, make sure that their investments, the money they have, their budget is all in good shape to achieve their short-term goals and their long-term goals. Do you propose that people um, be a little bit more aggressive as a younger person, then when they get to retirement, they start being a little more conservative, yeah. kind of pull back Typically, a little. Typically, that's the way it goes. So younger investors have more time on their side, right? Right, because the goal is usually retirement, which is usually 20, 30 years away. Right. So they have more time to ride out the market volatility. Okay. So they can they can be more aggressive. When you get older and you start getting towards retirement, you want to sh take some of that risk off the table. So you go from the wealth accumulation mode to the wealth preservation mode and start protecting those assets because mar the markets can be volatile. The end of 2018, the stock market was down 20% in Q4. Yes. So that was a pretty pretty volatile swing. So you don't want that to happen and really have a big effect on your portfolio if you're a year or two away from retirement or if you just entered retirement and you need to count on those money to, to generate income for you. Now, um, when you're looking at retirement, how much money do you feel like you need to have in your um, I guess your coffers. That's a, that's a great um, question. If if you're looking at retirement. Yeah, great question. I get that all the time. Mm -hmm. It really it's a it's a customized personal number. So I get that question all the time. How much should I have? It really depends on your lifestyle. How much are you going to spend? How much do you need to spend, or what income do you need on a monthly basis to achieve all your 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 expenses? Okay, mm -hmm. your fixed expenses and then your very low expenses. So I tell people a good exercise is to figure out what your fixed expenses are, and account for those, what's your mortgage payment, your property tax, car insurance, groceries, all those things that are kind of fixed to live on a monthly basis, and then account for some variable expenses. How much are you, how many vacations are you going on per year? How many times are you going to eat out? What's your entertainment? That'll give you a good idea of what you need on a monthly bit, you know, basis on income, mm -hmm. and then you can decide what that portfolio number needs to be to accomplish that. So for everyone, it's a different number. Now, when you go to these uh library presentations, mm -hmm. financial forecasts. What is the biggest question that you get? What, what is the most, um, what, what are people concerned about? They're concerned about what, what their allocation should be as one. You know, mm -hmm. how much risk should I be taking with my portfolio at my certain, certain age? Um, what's the market going to do the next year? I always tell people I don't have a short-term crystal ball. Long-term, I'm very bullish on the market. Okay. Short-term is, you know, anything can happen. I mean, last year, again, as I mentioned, um, you know, 2018, the market dropped 20% in a quarter. So that was a pretty steep kind of drop in a couple months. Right. Um, that could happen, unfortunately, at any point. Long term, I'm very bullish. But a lot of people are concerned about short term movements. Um, but they're concerned about where they should be. Is the is their allocation fitting their goals and needs? And that's what really people need to focus on. That's what an advisor can help you decide if you're taking too much risk or too little risk to achieve your goals moving forward. Okay. John, what are your final thoughts for 2020? Should we be thinking bull or bear? So I do think the markets will do well in 2020. I think we'll have a return of positive returns based on the economic growth. Um, but there's always uncertainty out there. So we have some geopolitical issues that might be out there. Right. I, I, I stress that investors, you know, first you look at your overall allocation, see if it fits your long-term needs, and stick with your allocation. The volatility is normal in the stock market. Over right. the past 30 years, the intra-year decline on average has been about 15%. So that that's normal. So you don't let those panic you as long as your allocation's in good shape to reach your long-term goals. Ride out the volatility and you should be fine long-term. Well, John, thank you. It's always a pleasure having you here. My pleasure. Thanks. For more information regarding Financial Forecast 2020 or any upcoming Mount Prospect Public Library event, contact the library at area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl. Org. Crafting is a pastime that might just get us through those cold winter months. Let's peek in on a Make It Monday, giving teens a whimsical taste of a warmer climate. 
It might be a snowy day outside, but inside, teens are creating a desert-like atmosphere with these maintenance-free yarn succulents. It's a yarn version of basically a succulent or a cactus. We had a bunch of patterns that we were thinking about doing, but we settled on one that looks like this that would be easier for them to actually complete during the program. This idea um, comes from my love of knitting and also my love of plants. And talking to some of the teens, they were like, I'm not good at raising plants. And I said, oh, well, you know, there are a lot of ways that you can make little yarn plants. So we decided we'll turn into a program and see how it goes. Teen librarian Abigail Weaver facilitates this program, one in a series of young adult events entitled Make It Monday. We had a request from a lot of teens to have more craft programs, so we thought it would be a good idea to make a monthly program, call it Make It Mondays, that way they would be able to just look for that title and know this is going to be our craft program for the month. The library provides all the supplies necessary to complete each Make It Monday craft, which in this case includes yarn, knitting needles, crochet hooks, and basic know-how. They had a chance to learn how to knit or crochet, and it started as like a square. For knitting, I taught them how to cast on, and I taught them a basic knit stitch. We taught them how to sew it together, and then they stuffed them, they added the flowers, and then they created this little yarn succulent. Everyone leaves with a little vase containing an adorable green succulent sporting a cactus flower and perhaps a sense of accomplishment, having acquired a new skill. The particular benefits of these craft programs is that it's a way for them to really express themselves while also gaining new skills and really that's part of what we're trying to do as a library. We're trying to help people learn, you know, continuing learning all throughout your life but also providing enjoyment they're hanging out with other teens who also like making things. They're hanging out with us as teen librarians. It's just, you know, we're creating a community and that's important. Earlier in the program, we invited you to chill out at your library by joining our 2020 Winter Reading Program. And if you're looking for a few good reads, our staff has a variety of suggestions to suit your interests. Now here's communications specialist Joanne Greenwald with her best book pick from the Adult Services Department. In 1927, a man impeccably dressed in silk trousers, shiny wingtips, and a fedora chases a panicked woman through a Cincinnati park. When he catches up to her, a shot from a pearl-handed revolver rings out. Welcome to the Ghost of Eden Park, the bootleg king, the woman who pursued him, and the murder that shocked Jazz Age America. After that stunning prologue, the author takes us back to the early days of Prohibition, well before the heyday of Al Capone. We meet a German immigrant named George Ramis, a man who saw an opportunity, gave up his career as a lawyer, and became a multimillionaire by trafficking whiskey. He becomes famous for throwing parties to rival those of the great Gatsby and enjoys a lavish life beyond anyone's wildest dreams. However, at the same time, an up-and-coming prosecutor, in spite of opposition from her bosses, is determined to bring him down, and she doesn't give up easily. Author Karen Abbott, known for her dedicated research, spins an incredible true-life tale that is as riveting as any other blockbuster crime drama. Recommendations from the Adult Services Department this month highlight fascinating figures in history on the wrong side of the law. The Girls of Murder City by Douglas Perry documents the true stories of the women whose sensational murder trials inspired the musical Chicago. Ballad of the Whiskey Robber by Julian Rubinstein follows the misadventures of a Budapest bank robber while profiling the investigators assigned to his case. Queen of Thieves by J. North Conway looks at the life of a German emigre who climbed to the top of the New York criminal underworld and became the country's top recipient of stolen goods for a quarter century. In Gentlemen Bootleggers by Bryce T. Bauer, the townspeople of a small rural Iowa community keep themselves busy during Prohibition by running a bootlegging empire. 
And Empire of Deception by Dean Job is the rollicking story of greed, financial corruption, dirty politics, and a brilliant and wildly charming con man who keeps a Ponzi scheme alive perhaps longer than anyone else in history. Recommendations from the Youth Services Department this month focus on fearless women you should know. Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls, 100 Tales of Extraordinary Women by Elena Favilli and Francesca Cavallo contains the inspirational illustrated narratives of heroines past and present. Hidden Figures, the true story of four black women and the space race by Margot Lee Shetterly and Winifred Conkling explores the pivotal contributions of NASA's African-American women mathematicians to America's space program. I Am Malala, How One Girl Stood Up for Education and Changed the World by Malala Yousafzai and Patricia McCormick is a remarkable tale of a family uprooted by global terrorism who championed a fight for the education of young women. In Brown Girl Dreaming, award-winning author Jacqueline Woodson reflects through poetry the joy of finding her voice as a writer. And I Dissent, Ruth Bader Ginsburg Makes Her Mark by Debbie Levy, traces the achievements of the celebrated Supreme Court Justice, focusing on her many acts of civil disagreement. Finally, here's Youth Programming Assistant Amy Schlachter with her best book pick from this department. Louise Thaden, Marvel Crossan, Eleanor Smith, Ruth Nichols, Pancho Barnes, Amelia Earhart. I'm guessing you have only heard of one of these women, but all of these amazing women were trailblazers in the field of aviation. Marvel Crossan built a plane before she even learned to fly. Louise Thaden shattered altitude records. Eleanor Smith, at the age of 17, flew under the Brooklyn Bridge. Ruth Nichols became the first woman to land in all 48 contiguous states. And Pancho Barnes broke Amelia Earhart's world women's speed record in 1930. Steve Scheinkin's book, Born to Fly, takes us back to the early days of aviation and tells us the stories of the courageous women who participated in the 1929 Air Derby, an air race from California to Cleveland on August 18, 1929, just nine years after women finally got the right to vote, 19 women took off from Santa Monica, California and set off across the country. Born to Fly takes us along on this thrilling and dangerous journey, focusing both on the camaraderie as well as the competitive spirit of the racers. Born to Fly features photographs and illustrations of the pilots and planes, which really helps to bring this amazing piece of history alive. Steve Scheinkin is a master storyteller of true stories, and Born to Fly is not to be missed. Super Saturdays give families the opportunity to experience quality entertainment free of charge. Let's enjoy a fun-filled rock concert for kids. Ralph's World Live. Say hello. Say hello. It's 11 o'clock on a Super Saturday morning, and families here at the Mount Prospect Public Library are thrilling to the rollicking music of Ralph's World Live. Hi, everybody! Ralph's World is rock and roll for kids that's fun for the whole family. And just get them excited about coming to the library, excited about books, excited about music, and being creative. And that's so essential. A seasoned musician in the world of rock and roll, Ralph Covert enjoys touring the library circuit and sharing his brand of family entertainment. One of the reasons I do the library tours is uh, um, reading and literacy is a, is a big passion and a big part of what I love doing. Covert performs original songs from his critically acclaimed 10 album repertoire. I have some activity songs where the kids can kind of get up on their feet and be silly and get their yagas out. Um, I have some humorous uh, songs, some sly um, nods to the moms and dads, and some uh, singing and shouting songs to get the kids using their voices and encourage them to sing certain songs really loud so they annoy the people over in nonfiction. Songwriting comes naturally to this published author and Jefferson award-winning playwright who has been strumming a guitar since he was a child. I wrote my first song when I was eight. Um, and I've always been, you know, writing stories and uh, little books and, you know, acting. And in the 90s, I, my energy was filled with my rock and roll band, The Bad Examples. 
out, put out a bunch of records, had some small hits, but didn't break through to be that next level of superstars. During the 90s, Covert also expanded his talents to include education, teaching songwriting and wiggle worm classes at the Old Town School of Folk Music. And I really enjoyed it, but it was kind of something I just kind of did for myself and for fun. Uh, and a fellow who had a local uh, rock and roll label, Minty Fresh, um, his son was in my class, and uh, he said, we, you should put out a kid's record. So we did that, and it became music that the parents could love as much as the kids. We would do like Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Uh, kids shows at rock and roll clubs. And it totally blew up uh, nationally. I ended up signing with Disney. I was on the Disney Channel uh, for a number of years, about five years. They were playing my videos and putting out my records. And the books kind of grew out of that. So the music paired with uh, the books makes for a great tool for early reading to help these kids get a real leg up and, and have their passion fuel new passions. Everybody together. Covert's passion for providing an entertaining and educational experience for library patrons is distinctively clear. Libraries are pure. It's just me and the kids and the moms and the dads in this space interacting to do a concert at a library where the parents and kids have a chance to go in and experience that space and share that, that aspect of community is just a treasure. Ralph's World Live is just one example of the many entertaining, informational, and educational events featured here at the Mount Prospect Public Library every month. Don't miss any library programs you'd like to experience. Here's a list of events scheduled in January and February. Reservations are strongly recommended. For more information regarding these events, call area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. You'll also find a listing and description of all upcoming Mount Prospect Public Library events in your library newsletter preview. The winter months can create unique opportunities for either tackling an artistic indoor project or experiencing the rush of a cold weather sport. With this in mind, our Library Live camera today asks the question, what is your favorite winter pastime and why? Here are some responses. Reading is one of my favorites because you can't be outside because it's just too cold. Or I like to run during the summer, can't do it in the winter. And uh, I don't know, it just takes up some time and I like being in the house when it's too cold out. My favorite winter pastime would be spending it with my kids as much as I can. We would like to go to the library. We also like to take a couple of vacations, you know, to Wisconsin to do snowboarding. Uh, reading books because it, it, you can go all over the world just in a, reading a little story. That wraps up this edition of Library Life. For more information on any of the Mount Prospect Public Library services and events highlighted here, call area code 847-253-5675 or visit our website at www.mppl.org. And don't forget to chill out at your library this year by joining the 2020 Winter Reading Program running throughout the month of February.